Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is the skeletal system. There are many functions of bones in your skeleton in general. First one, support. Support, without bones, you'd be a blob. You, you wouldn't have any posture, you wouldn't be able to move. Uh, your whole body just wouldn't be your body without the bones. Storage, uh, when it comes to storing stuff, your bones have a lot on their plate. Lipids. Most people don't realize this. There's actually a lot of fat contained in bones for storage purposes. You also have your blood making ability within bones. And besides that, most of the weight of bones is a lot of calcified compounds that you can release when you're running low on those things. If you're not getting quite as much through your diet, your bones can let go of some of that to help other organs. The downside is, of course, if you continue to not have enough in your diet, your bones are going to lose a lot of their density and a lot of their mass. As I mentioned a second ago, production of blood. Not just red blood cells, all of your blood cells are produced in the marrow within your bones. Protection, your skull, your rib cage, uh, the pelvic bones, there's a lot of protection going on. Um, Think about all the times you've fallen on your head. If it wasn't for your skull, you'd have brain damage. Leverage. In other words, movement. Um, your ability to push a door open, turn a knob. Uh, you have muscles pulling on bones in different ways to allow you to manipulate your environment to help whatever you got to get done. When we look at a typical bone, there are lots of things that you need to know to understand how the bone's working. Compact bone versus spongy bone. So if we look at this cross section here, you can see that there's this term cancellous bone. That's another term for spongy bone. And you can see that when you look in here, there's lots of little holes, little spaces. It looks spongy. And these little areas of bone that are not the spaces are called trabeculae. And they're kind of like crisscrossing little units of, of bone tissue. And it actually helps reinforce them. It's kind of like a engineering. When you, when you look at how um, people are, are making buildings and they will crisscross beams to help with, with the weight distribution and to help keep that stable, it's very similar more at the ends of your bones. So here's the end of a bone. If we looked at the other end down here, you'd also see a high concentration of that spongy bone. The compact bone tends to be more on the outer rim. So you can see that where it's just pure white here, that's compact bone. Much more densely compacted bone tissue. And you're going to have that usually on the outsides. The epiphysis versus the diaphysis. So let's continue this bone drawing a little further. Let's pretend that's the other end. The epiphysis, or plural be epiphyses, would be here and here. The diaphysis is the middle portion. And so this term applies mainly to the long bones. When we look at the humerus, the femurs, or you know your, your thigh bones, uh, the diaphysis would be that middle straight region and the two ends, the epiphyses. The periosteum is a term for the outer layer of bone. And it's going to be most obvious in the section of the diaphysis. The outer layer that you're going to have uh, ligaments being attached to, uh, the part that you'd be holding if you actually had your hands around the, the diaphysis, you're touching the periosteum. The articular cartilage is articular because it's when bones articulate with respect to one another. So when you look at how a bone connects to another bone via a joint, the articular cartilage is usually going to be a nice cushion that's going to be on the ends that are touching the other bones. Lacunae. If we zoom in really, really, really close to what's going on in here, a lacuna is going to be a home for a bone cell, also called an osteocyte. So here's an osteocyte with its nucleus. The red is that chamber uh, deep within the matrix of the bone or, or the hard parts of the bone where you're going to have bone cells. Yes, there are cells in every bone of the body. They make up a very, very, very small portion of the mass of the bone because most of the bone is 
all that hard stuff, all those calcified components uh, that your cells within the bone can help produce and keep there. Canaliculi. So if we look at this lacuna, and lacunae would be plural, you have passageways that extend from this chamber. So these two little passageways, they're like canals. So the canaliculi, this is plural, are like little canals that help get nutrients to the cells of your bones, help get wastes out, help get the gases in and out. So it's like this crazy canal system. And you can see in this particular cross-section all of these little canals. And these are just major ones. There would be even smaller canals uh, connecting all these, kind of like freeways with, you know, compared to uh, surface streets. Matrix. The bone matrix is just all that hard bone stuff. All of this in here is bone matrix. And it's mostly um, salts that would be uh, full of calcium. So calcium carbonate is a major one. Um, lots of secretions from your osteocytes, which we'll talk more about in a sec, uh, that give your bones that mass, that hardness. Osteons are kind of like these uh, circular units. Here and here you can see there are these circular regions that have tinier concentric circles within them, those are the osteons. And that's how you have a lot of orientation within bone. You can see that we're in compact bone here, and that when we go more towards the inner part here, you're going to have more of this uh, spongy bone, also called cancellous bone. So osteons, very common units within the structure of the compact bone. Central canal, The central canal you can see here, here, here. So within each osteon, there is a, a major thoroughfare uh, of fluid, of, of blood flow uh, to those sections. And then finally, medullary cavity. The word medulla means inner. So medullary cavity, this region within the middle here, that's hollow is the medullary cavity. Uh, there you're going to have a lot of bone marrow. 